Hey YouTube, this is City Prepping. After making my first bug out bag video, I've had requests to make a video covering bug out bags for families. In this video, I will run through our children's bug out bags, my wife's, and also mine. Now, obviously I realize every family is different and your children may be at different ages than mine. As such, I'm gonna talk specifically about the gear for my family, but I'll also provide a download guide in the description below so you can read more about bug out bags and the specific gear we use along with other options. In the guide, I'll also discuss some things for you to consider when billing bug out bags for your children depending on their age. Now, due to the length of the video, I'll also put links below to the different sections in this video if you just want to skip ahead to parts where I discuss the various bug out bag setups. Also, please feel free to subscribe to our channel and leave feedback in our comment section below. All right, so let's jump in. All right, so let's talk about bug out bags for your children. I have two children, five and seven. So I'm going to talk about their specific setup. They're not going to be able to carry a lot of gear. So what I've done is I tried to boil down just the essentials. And let's go ahead and run through the top to the bottom pocket here. Um, what I always do is I put flashlights in a place that are very accessible and easy to get to. In this case, this top pocket. And I provide some backup batteries. You don't want to bury that in the bag because if it's dark and they're trying to find a you know flashlight, that's just going to be really difficult for them. Here we've got this pocket right here. Now what I purposely did is I decided to put in a handful of uh, different types, you know, just candies. And it's just going to be a psychological morale booster for them at that age, you know, breaking up and giving one of these, you know, once or twice a day. It's just going to be a lot of help. Surprisingly, simple things like that make a big difference. If you have kids, you know that. The uh, just some, you know, cleaning stuff or hand sanitizer, that kind of stuff. Again, I just tried to put something they can grab really quick in a bag. This is a Kim stick. Um, these can serve a lot of purposes, obviously, other than just providing light. They can be used for signaling if they get lost. And I want them to have that. Um, now, I put it purposely a lot of these uh, Stinger Ginger Snap Waffle. These are, you know, these are going to be great for morale, just basic energy. Moist wipes. I probably should put a lot more in here. I don't have enough at the moment, but I'll go ahead and restock that here shortly. Okay, so that's those two outside pockets. Let's go ahead and jump into the main compartment. And again, uh, you're not going to see a ton of gear here. Um, just got a basic cup, and I put two plastic spoons. These are lightweight. If they break one, they'll have a backup for eating. A respirator. We have a lot of fires out here in Southern California. We're having a lot right now. Just having a way to filter their air will be good. A deck of cards. You can play a lot of different games with cards. So we have different games in our house, like Crazy Eights or Go Fish or Old Maid, but I want to get something that had more of a kind of a, you know, a lot of different games you could play. Bottled water, that's probably the heaviest thing in their bag. I think it's going to be good for them to be able to carry their own water again if they get split up. Having that will be really good. Uh, tush wipes, toilet paper. And then I just put a change of clothes, baseball cap where we live. It gets pretty hot. A lot of sun. Now, <clears throat> this one is, out of everything, if I had to say one thing, I would probably put some type of, you know, electronic device for them to play. I like the fact that this has a USB charger on the bottom, and I do have a USB hand crank in my primary bug out back, and I can charge this. Some clothes, socks, pants, shirts. Again, it's summertime right now, so you don't see any heavy warm gear in here. If this was winter and I do, I would change out the gear depending on the season. Uh, I would probably put warm clothing, long sleeve pants, etc., a jacket. Put this whistle on the front of their backpack so they can easily access it right there. It's just right on their shoulder strap. This is important if they get split up. So, again, that's my child's bug out bag. I would encourage you to download the document and look at other options depending on your children's age and hope that gives you a at least an idea of a starting point. Okay, so I wanted to run you through my wife's bug out bag. This is a 511 Rush 72 bag. And let's go ahead and look at some of the uh, pockets here. This is the outside compartment. I'll go ahead and open this up here. We've got a standard compass. And I've got different protein bars, um, just, you know, basic snacks while you're out hiking or if you're moving around, same thing. Uh, this is the Stinger protein bar. These things are great. Got the multi-tool. This is a Swiss Army knife. As in all my bug out bags, I try to set up a simple, some type of simple stove. This is the, what is this called? The S-Bit 
might be mispronouncing that. But it's a simple little stove. You can open it up. It's got these tablets inside you can light up. And this becomes a little stove. You pop it open here. And I believe I've got some extra fuel for it here. I've also got the wet fire. This stuff is great. Just catches on fire as soon as you light it up. Um, Stormproof matches and your standard kind of flint and steel here. So that's that pocket. Can't recall if I've got anything. I've got some little pockets here. Mechanics gloves. Again, if you're out doing something, you don't want to get your hands messed up. Let me see if I got anything in here. I believe I just have a simple emergency mylar rescue blanket. All right, duct tape. Probably will reduce that. I don't think she needs that amount, but duct tape is always good to have. A life straw. Got a memo book if she needs to take notes, write anything down, write a piece of paper, a uh, simple pen. You also have this little pocket right here on the top. Let's take a look in there. I've got a just a simple two-way radio. I've also just a simple headlamp. I believe this runs on AAA batteries, which is what I always carry. And by the way, I don't store AAA batteries inside the headlamp or in my flashlights. I just don't want them to corrode and damage it. Uh, a really strong whistle. These things you can hear them pretty far away. Kim light. And another flashlight. This is the Micro Streamline, and I always carry these on my person for my, uh, as part of my EDC. These things are tiny, but only one AAA battery, and they do a great job. All right, so moving into the main compartment here. I've got the K-Bar. Um... K-Bar Becker, I believe it's BK2, I forget the exact. Yeah, BK2, that's the one. These are amazing bushcraft knives as you look at how thick these things are. You can, you know, these are pretty much little tanks. Not gonna be able to break them. Heavy as heck though, that's my only complaint about them. All right, going into this compartment, we've got a Shagma. Again, these things, you know, can serve so many purposes, quite a lot of purposes, good to have. Uh, tush wipes, sanitary products, feminine hygiene products, paracord right in here in this main compartment. This is your 550 paracord, 100 feet. All right, going on a little more here. As also I have in my personal bug out bag, I've got the ProFly rain tarp. This is by Eno. Uh, I purposely put two shelters. One in my bag and one in hers. In the event we get split, shelter is very critical. And in the event, for whatever reason, we get split up, I want to make sure she has hers. This is a Stanley. Um, I believe on their site they say you're not supposed to, supposed to you know, put these over fire, but if you set them next to coals, you can boil water in here and other stuff like that. This is the Sole Emergency Bibby. And then I've got just a simple... It comes with two cups. And I, put, I believe I put the other cup in my son's bag. And so that's that. Uh, first aid kit. I'm probably gonna work on expanding this out a little more. Right now it's a little on the lean side, I have the basics, but I always do carry uh, an Israeli bandage on both of the bags. Always wanna have some level of trauma protection in the event someone gets really injured. Again, these are things that are really popular with EMTs. They carry these. Uh, I've talked to diff different EMTs and they really like them. Uh, Eno double hammock, and again, this is the same thing I have in mind. These are rated up to 350 pounds, and we can split our kids, one in my bag and one in hers. Oh, I'm sorry, one in her hammock and one in mine. Now, this is, again, just like I have in mind, I've got the Mountain House uh, food in here. And I've tried to count the calories as close as I can to make sure she'll have enough and I'll have enough. Um, now, I keep the, uh, it's got this, where is that? Oh, I want to say it's right here. You can put in your water bladder there and then run it out right here through this hole and then obviously have this place right here. Uh, one other thing, just a simple, I believe it's called eating tool. And um, these are kind of like a multifunction little tool here. So anyway, that's my wife's bug out bag and hope it gives you some ideas. Okay, so here's my bug out bag setup. It's a two part setup. I've got a 511 Moab attached on the front, and this is my EDC or everyday carry. 
and it easily attaches to the primary bug out bag by this four point connection system here. And this is, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, it's an Elberstock uh, half track. And this backpack is amazing. I used to do a lot of mountain climbing for years and I've had a lot of different packs and this is probably one of the nicest quality packs I've had. So the way these are set up is again, they're attached with a four point system. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and walk you through real quick what I have in my EDC. I'll break that down and then I'll explain how I set up my primary bug out bag here in the back. So to begin with, let's go ahead and talk about my EDC or everyday carry. Again, this is attached to my primary bug out bag by these, uh, rather with these connection points right here on this bag. So I'll go ahead and open it up for you. This is a front pouch. And again, this is a, uh, this is the Rush, oh, I'm sorry, this is the 511 Moab. And let's go ahead and walk through this. I've got a air, uh, respirator, got a water filter. This is called a Pure Sip. I personally got a glow stick. I've got a emergency survival blanket. Let's see, I think that's it. I also always carry, this is again one of those things that I've got a backup copy on my cell phone, which I also carry, but these things are awesome. They're SAS survival guys. This is a really small one. All right, running into the next ones, I've got these iodine water purification tablets, tush wipes. I also have toilet paper in my primary bug out bag. Got some more iodine tablets here. I've got antibacterial moist wipes. Carry several different pens and also a Sharpie. Got some carabiners. These are not designed for climbing, but in situations where you may be setting up a camp and need to run lines or stuff like that, these could come in handy. This is my multi-tool. I believe this is a Leatherman, I forget which one this is, titanium. Yep, and it's also got these uh, additional add-ons, little hex bits here. This one, Got several different things going on here. And by the way, you'll notice in my setup, I tend to put everything in Ziploc bags. It allows me to keep things compartmentalized and also if things get wet, it'll keep things fine. I carry $20 cash, broken down in small bills. This is a sole uh, survival mirror, a USB drive. Um, I forget what these things are called. They're like space pins or something. They're supposed to ride, ride on anything in rain, etc. Uh, crazy glue. And again, duct tape, I mentioned that. Oh, also in here, I'll just open this up really quick. I've got a sewing kit in the event. I've got to sew up anything like clothes or tent or anything like that. This is the, I forget what the name of this is, Tactica headlamp. These things are awesome. It has three different settings. All right, this is, as you can imagine, Firestorm proof matches. Um, magnesium, flint and steel kind of set up and oh, wet fire, but these are amazing. You just shave off a little bit and you can spark this uh, with your flint and steel and they will take right off. AAA batteries. My flashlights that I carry, I try to keep them all AAA so that obviously I'm not having to carry double A's and triple A's. These are just a pair of headsets or earplugs rather, I'm sorry, uh, just, you know, I'm often out and about if I go to Starbucks or something like that and just want to get, you know, a little focus on what I'm working on, I can just plug these in. This is the All Weather Expedition Journal. Again, right in the rain. Uh, just good to have a basic way of keeping track of information, a lot of good stuff in here. See, I've got a little small flashlight that I carry in the event that I just reach in the bag and I need to see things quickly. And I also keep a monocle. This just allows you to see out pretty good distance. Really small, lightweight. Compass. Definitely don't leave home without this. All right, let's go ahead and open up the primary bag here. Now, in this primary bag, I carry... Again, some things that are also in my main bug out bag. You will notice that a few things are kind of duplicates because again, this is my EDC. 
And so I have like miniaturized versions of certain things. Um, again, specifically the first aid kit. And in this first aid kit, you've got your basic stuff, some gloves. I do carry a tourniquet in here. This is a Shagma that I picked up in Afghanistan. These are really great. They serve a lot of purposes. A Israeli bandage, same thing. And this is my clean canteen. I personally uh, went with the option of metal instead of plastic. It does weigh more, but the advantage is you can boil water in this versus the plastic one, obviously. Here we go. We'll go over into this compartment here. I've got some mechanics gloves. There's been so many times I'll get stuck out somewhere, have to work on the car or something like that, or just in general, if I don't want to get my hands beat up, these are always good to have on the standby. Glasses. Uh, I wear glasses, so having a pair of backup glasses for me is critical because in the event one of my glasses go, you know, gets busted or broken, um, <laughs> I just can't see. So that's important to me. It's got this little area for sunglasses is what it, I think was originally designed for. I carry a, a Balfang dual FM trans receiver. This is a ham radio. And in emergency situations, you legally can transmit on a ham radio without a license. But it's a good idea to get one anyway, just so you, in the event of emergency, you actually know how to use it. And then I just carry this super loud whistle. It's really annoying, but... Yeah, you can hear it from far away. So that is my EDC. Okay, so now let's cover the primary part of my bug out bag, that being obviously the main bug out bag. Now, again, this is a overstock, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that, half track. Let me show you some of the things on the side before I get into the primary. On the side here, I've got my survival knife. This is a uh, K-Bar Becker BK-7. It's a pretty big knife. This is a XMRE mill ready to eat. I've got two of these in my bag. Uh, MREs, they're just really great because obviously they, you know, I, I believe this one has 1300 calories. One that I've also got an emergency ration, 1200 calories. All right, on the inside, I've got an Eno flight uh, rain trap. This is the ProFly Sill rain trap. Now, I've got a Tokes titanium cup. These things weigh next to nothing. And inside I've got my emergency soul uh, sleeping bivy. You will notice I don't have a sleeping bag on my setup where I live. It's pretty hot. I've got the different mountain house food supplies here. Again, I've tried to balance this out. They have a lot of different options. I've tried to mix it up enough where I've got a good balance of protein and carbs. I've got a titanium spork. These things weigh next to nothing. All right, going into the next one, I've got uh, fuel for my actual stove. And let me show you that real quick. I've got a small pocket stove here. These things are tiny. Way, you know, way next to nothing. And you can just slap those on top of that uh, fuel source. These are good to go. All right, so moving on with my setup as far as like sleeping gear and stuff. This is an Eno and it is a double hammock. So we have two kids. They're both really small right now. And again, I think these things can uh, handle up to 350 pounds. My kids are obviously really small at this point. So between one, me and one of my kids, uh, I'll be able to easily fit in both of us in here. The same thing for my wife. She has that set up. Now I have this one. Uh, this is the, you know, gosh, this is a strap you put on the tree. Um, I have this in my bag, not my wife's bag, but these allow you to securely um, set up your double hammock. I've got the medical fundamentals kit here. And again, one of the reasons I went with a larger kit is because I have a family and I just want to make sure I cover all the bases. There's four of us in total. I've got tent stakes in here at the very bottom and these are good for the rain fly to secure that down. Let me move to the top real quick and go through Again, I've got the wet dry and also, excuse me, the um, wet fire rather and the storm matches. And again, you notice I had that in my EDC as well. And I've got some duplicate items I can just toss or distribute it somewhere else if I need to. Paracord, uh, 100 feet. This is 550. Always have paracord in your bags. Has a lot of purposes. 
I was talking earlier about if I needed to secure my sleeping bag on top of my backpack with Molly. I've got these straps for that. I've got the, which one is this? Scorpion 2. This is a flashlight. You can hand crank solar. And one of the things I really love is you can charge your cell phone and it actually works. You can hand crank it. I don't think the solar part works. Again, AAA batteries, different protein bars, snacks as you're hiking along. And again, more iodine tablets. I've also got some snares that I've built. I'll probably be adding a few more of these if in the event I've got to try to, you know, set up snares to catch small, small game. And the last side here is this pocket right here. Oops. And I'll go through this one real quick. I've got a poncho. Just a basic rain poncho. These can also double over as a shelter. They're pretty large. I used to use rain jackets when I would mountain climb, and I hate rain jackets because they would trap in uh, moisture on your body. Uh, just basic thermal gear. Coming on summertime, I'll probably pull that out. Just a seasonal thing. That's extra weight. Just a nightcap. Also, due to the fact that I live in a desert area, water is such a big issue. So, I've got the Camel Pack uh, water hydration system here, as you can see. Uh, you know comes out really nicely and again it has that attachment point in here in the back, which I really like and Also, I believe on this side. Yeah, here we go. Let me dig this out. This is a two-liter platypus. I um, I had one of these originally that I had set up I put it on both sides of the bag, but just just extra weight I decided to just cut down this because This can go up to two liters fill this up and just toss it in here and you know on the side and it'll slide in really nicely so I believe I covered everything in my bug out bag and my EDC. So hopefully that gives you some ideas how to set yours up. You don't have to copy everything and every situation is different and unique, but that's the pack that I have for my particular environment. Boys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please feel free to click on the like button below or subscribe to our channel. Also, please feel free to post a comment below. I always get a lot of useful information from the YouTube community. Again, please remember there's a download guide in the description below. I've got some different information about bug out bags, the gear that I use, and I go into a little more detail or a great more detail than I did in the video about the different age groups. And hopefully you can find some useful information there. As always, be safe out there.